Remember that we argued that an indifference curve need not be a curve at all. An indifference curve is simply a collection of bundles, and such a collection may be any subset of the first quadrant. Well, it turns out that we will be able to make much more progress in analyzing the two goods model if every indifference curve is the graph of a function. As we will see in this lecture, the crucial assumption which will do this for us, in addition to weak preferences being a total order, is strict monotonicity. Starting from a two goods model, where the consumer has weak preferences which are totally ordered and strictly monotonic, we will demonstrate the following. First, each indifference curve will be the graph of a function where x1 is the input of the function and x2 is the output of the function. We have now excluded the possibility of a thick indifference curve since such curve cannot be the graph of a function. Second, this function will be strictly decreasing for all values of x1. That is, the derivative of f is negative everywhere. Keep in mind that two different indifference curves are graphs of two different functions. So here is the picture of one indifference curve when preferences are strictly monotonic. It is the graph of some function f. It slopes downwards and given x1, I can plug this value into the function, which will give me x2 such that the x1 comma x2 bundle is on the indifference curve. Let's see exactly why the assumption of strict monotonicity will make any indifference curve the graph of some function f. If x2 is some function of x1, then we know that feeding one value of x1 into this function will give you one and only one value of x2. So for a given value of x1, there is only one point on the graph of this function f. If the graph of the function was something like this, then we would have two points on the graph which would not be allowed. Suppose now that my preferences are strictly monotonic. How do I know that there can be at most one bundle containing this much of good one on a given indifference curve? Well, let's say that we actually had two bundles, these two, with the same amount of good one on the same indifference curve. That would not be consistent with strict monotonicity. This bundle contains an equal amount of good one, but strictly more of good two. So by strict monotonicity, this bundle must be strictly preferred to this one, and they cannot lie on the same indifference curve. So for a given value of x1, there can be at most one point or one bundle on the indifference curve. The same is true for any other value of x1. At most one bundle on the indifference curve like this, which means that when you connect these points and draw the indifference curve, it will be the graph of some function f. With strict monotonicity, we cannot have thick indifference curves, and we cannot have elliptical indifference curves that we had when we had a satiation point. You can also see why we need strict monotonicity and why monotonicity itself is not enough. An indifference curve, such as this vertical line, is consistent with monotonicity. In this case, good2 is a neutral and I'm indifferent between any two bundles on this straight line. However, there is no function which has this graph. So we need to exclude neutral goods and we need strict monotonicity. Let's consider one more example. My indifference curve is the graph of the function x2 is equal to 6 divided by x1, where x1 now must be strictly greater than 0. Here is the graph of this function. Plugging x1 equal to 1 into the function will give me x2 equal to 6. Therefore, the bundle 1, 6 is on the indifference curve. For x1 equal to 2, we get x2 is equal to 3, giving us a second bundle on the indifference curve, 2, 3. x1 equal to 3 implies that x2 is equal to 2, and x1 equal to 6 will give us x2 is equal to 1. I have four bundles, and the consumer is indifferent between all of them. 
I can pick x1 to be any positive number and plugging this number into the function will give me a bundle on the red indifference curve. We can also conclude, for example, that the bundle 2,4 is strictly preferred to 2,3 and all the bundles on our indifference curve, since it is above and to the right of our indifference curve. This bundle contains the same amount of good 1, but more of good 2 compared to the bundle 2,3, just below it, which is on the indifference curve. By strict monotonicity, the bundle 2,4 must be strictly preferred to the bundle 2,3.